Welcome to the narrated fights version of the Tristan Guide. Now this guide is for Faction Warfare, so you can see I'm here in Faction Warfare Losec, a system called Ona Sykin. Now, I'm warping to a Novice site, which is where I recommend you do most of your PvP. And I'm in the Tristan from the fitting guide you just watched. So, it's important to keep in mind that uh, the, the cheat sheet is not a 100% hard and fast rule. That depends a lot on what your opponent is doing. Fittings are going to vary heavily from person to person. The cheat sheet simply looks at the fittings as generalities or um, what that ship is typically fitted like and therefore what the likely solution, the likely best tactic to that is. So if you go up against a ship that's usually a rail ship and you see that he's using blasters then you need to vary your strategy so with that let's start the video now you can see here I'm scanning the novice I see there's nothing in the novice and so I warp to it now this is an important point that when you first warp to a, a site it's usually best to be the first one in the site. So if you're in the site first, and you just sit in the site and wait, you can see there's a tormentor just came on scan, that's good. If you sit in the site and wait, then you have some, some advantages. So let's talk about those advantages before this fight starts. The advantage of being in the, in the, in, inside the site, not on the outside, is that you limit the types of ships that can come in. This is a novice, which means no Tech 2 frigates can come in. No destroyers, nothing bigger, no cruisers, nothing else. However, all of those ships and, and more, you know, any ship can sit right on the outside right here. So that's why it's always best not to warp directly to the novice to first go to a station or a gate or some kind of warpable planet belt that's near the site scan it to make sure that it's clear there's nothing on the gate waiting for you to see if there's anything already in the site maybe there's already a slicer in the site and you want to just avoid that or maybe there's you know, something worse so always scan the site before you warp to it once you get to the site by being inside you have the advantage that not only can you keep things out that you don't want to be in there but you also have the advantage that if something comes that you don't like you can warp off. So if you see a faction frigate, because faction frigates can get in the novices like the Comet can, the Hookbill, the, um, the Worm, all these frigates, they can get in there. So if you see something coming in that you really don't want to fight, or maybe you see three or four ships landing on the gate to come in and blob you, then in that case, you just warp off because you've got you've got about a 30-second buffer from the time you see them land on the gate the time they actually get in and the way you do that is you shorten your range which is right over here you shorten your range down to 1 AU once you're inside the site so with that out of the way let's go ahead and begin the fight now I want to go in before the fight starts just in case this other dude's his buddy or something and so I'm gonna go in and what you see me doing here is I'm looking at his ship so if you're ever unsure about what a ship does what's the ship's capabilities then it's always good to look at the ship. I still do this all the time because I, I haven't memorized every single ship in every statistic. So what I'm looking at right here is I'm looking at whether he has drones. He does, but he has less than me, so that's not going to be a big factor. What his bonuses are under the traits tab. Like what are the bonuses for that ship that he's likely to be using. And then right here you can see I'm looking at his slots and we missed it but he has four low slots which means he's an armor tank most likely so we know all that now go to get the drones out before they start so here's the thing when you're the first in the site you have an advantage because you can be ready for the fight before your opponent gets there that gives you probably a two second to three second advantage depending on how quick you are and how quick your opponent is but you have an advantage that you already have your drones out. You already have your afterburner started. Right? You've already got all your modules primed to be overloaded. We talked about that in the fitting video. So you're ready. Whereas the guy coming in, he's got to wait until he's out of warp. 
and he'll keep trying while he's coming out of warp. He'll be trying to get those drones out and won't let him. He'll be trying to approach and lock, and he can't do it. So once he comes in, he's then got to put his drones out. He's then got to turn his afterburner on. He's then got to hit his keypad. So it gives you about a two or three second advantage to where you're going to be hitting him for probably two or three seconds longer than he's hitting you, giving you a higher effective DPS throughout the fight. Because if you're doing damage for a longer period of time, then your average damage over the entire time is higher. So what I do, you see how I do this? See how I hit lock, orbit, lock, orbit, lock, orbit? Now, the reason I'm orbiting at 500 on him is because I believe he's going to be fit with beam lasers. And beam lasers don't track very well. My real guns don't track very well either, but the majority of my DPS comes from my drones. And what DPS does come from my guns, I have a tracking bonus on my guns. He doesn't have a tracking bonus. So if the majority of his damage output, DPS, is from his guns, then I need to do whatever I can in my power to remove his ability to do damage to me while maximizing the amount of damage I can do to him. And the, the solution to that is to orbit at 500. After burner on, you can see I went orbit, lock, orbit, lock until I saw that my ship was moving to the orbit. Then I can stop hitting orbit and then lock until I see that I'm starting to lock. Once I see that I'm starting to lock, you can see I hit F1 through F4 to prime all four of my top modules, the guns, the point, the warp scrambler, the web, and the NAS. The NAS is pretty big on this ship because it allows you to, for one, survive an energy neutralizer, which you'll run into sometimes. And for two, it allows you to guarantee that you're not going to go cap dead and have your, your uh, armor repair and your guns turn off at some point during the fight. That's the worst thing that can happen is to run out of capacitor, you have no afterburner, so you slow down, you start taking more damage. All these bad things. So you can see he's already got a shot on me. If you look right up here, let's see if I can remember how to do this. So if you look right here, okay, Shammy's cast misses you completely. Small focused beam laser. So you need to turn this on in your settings. Um, just hit escape. I think it's in the escape settings. I'll go double check that later. Um, but I can see from this several things. So for one, I see he missed me. That's good. My strategy's working. For two, he's got a small beam laser. So with the MAR, they have the option of pulse, short range, beam, long range. Now, if they go with pulse, they can fit a scorch crystal, which gives them long range, but reduces their tracking. So if it's a beam laser, you're always best to go in tight right? If it's a pulse laser for a MAR, it's a little bit more questionable because their, their pulse lasers can reach further, but they change ammo so quickly that it's still not in your favor on a pulse laser to go in tight because he's going to have Imperial Navy multi-frequency, the high damage uh, laser crystals in there. And if you try to go out, he's just going to switch to Scorch. So it's best in that case just to reduce his damage as much as possible and stay out wide. Um, if you see he's a pulse laser fit. So let's uh, remove that and start it back up. So also you can see he got DPS on me before I got DPS on him. Now, most likely, you know, that's just up to the odds, but it's also I probably could have executed a little bit faster. So if you do like I tell you to, if you go to the website and you see on the, um, on the right side there's must-have tools, um, OBS, open source broadcast software, and I've got a video to show how to set it up. Being able to go back and watch your fights like this and critique them yourself and say, hey, look, I was five seconds before I got damage on that guy. That's something I can practice and improve how quick I get damage. Or, hey, I take time to right-click my drones and then launch rather than dragging them out. If I drag them out, I could probably save myself two seconds and get the DPS on two seconds earlier. So what we want to look at now is we see his beam laser hit, but I'm hitting with my drones and I'm hitting with my, my guns. Everything's pretty good there. One thing I could do to improve, to improve this 
is I could overload my afterburner. Overloading my afterburner is going to increase my transversal velocity. Um, you see that he's outpacing me a little bit. I'm going 420, he's going 578, 581. The proper response to seeing that, and I know this is so much information to take in, it's just practice knowing what to look at, when to look at, um, seeing the warning signs that, oh, he's going faster than me, I need to correct for this, right? So ideally, if I was doing this and I wanted to make this fight even better, I would overload that afterburner. You can see I've got my drugs in, a 3% synth exile, and that's helping me to overrep him. I'm repping better than he is. Even though it looked like he was winning the fight pretty handily there, I was overrepping him, and I'm doing fairly good DPS. You can see he's controlling range, which is not good. He's controlling range, and the, I really should have overloaded the afterburner. And that's what recording your fights will allow you to do, is to let you see that. And then maybe next time I'll, I'll say, well, for now on, my strategy is going to be to overload the afterburner the moment the fight starts. That way I don't have to worry about potentially losing out on that little edge I would have had. And so at this point, the fight's really over. He got in one last rep, but it's over. I, you see, I overloaded my AAR the entire time, armor repair. Overloaded the guns the entire time. Always, especially the Tristan, because you only have two guns. If you have Thermodynamics 3, and please get it to at least 4, um and five later on when you have time, if you have that, then you're not going to burn out your guns in a frigate fight. You can overload for about two minutes or more. Most of these frigate fights are going to last less than a minute, and the very long ones are going to last maybe a minute and a half. <clears throat> it's very rare for them to go beyond that unless there's a kiting situation where someone's staying out wide and kind of um, not doing much damage to you and you're not doing much damage to them. And that's pretty much the fight. There's not much more to take from this, except, you know, I should have turned my AAR off a little bit earlier. Um, that's about it. You see that he was, you saw that he was, um, what's the color, blue or teal. Um, that color means he had a limited engagement timer with his pod. So I was, I was completely allowed under the rules of the game to kill his pod at that moment. I could have, uh, if I could lock it, it's very difficult. If someone isn't slow or doesn't want you to kill their pod, it's very hard to kill a pod in low sec because the pod warps instantly. So that's a, a piece of advice for you. When you die, just sit there and hover over the, um, well, select something on your overview and then just spam the warp. Click it as fast as you can as you're dying and you'll never lose your pod. Finally, a little bit of fight etiquette. You see we both say good fight in local. Always say good fight. Um, it's just, it's uh, E honor or space honor, uh, but that's it for that fight. Now we're going to go to the next fight. In this fight, I was fighting against a Tristan. Now the best I can tell, he was fit very similar to me, except he had the Tech 1 named guns. But really, that's not much difference either. So in a fight like this, where it's pretty much the same ship versus the same ship, one of the best things I can do is, you know, I've since changed the fit to have Warrior 2s. I think Warrior 2s would have done much better here because they're faster, they have better tracking, and they do the right type of damage to get through a armor tank. A, um, any ship with an AAR uh, is likely to have an explosive hole like we talked about in the fitting video. So the way you win in a fight where your ships are the same, and it's hard to really find a counter where you can beat an advantage. The way to win is just to outperform. And the way you outperform is with better skills by focusing in your skills on your drone skills and your Galante Frigate 5 and gun skills. And also by little edges you get from the implants, like I talked about, the 1% implants, the 3%, those things. Um, and by using the right damage types. So the Warrior 2s would have done better here. So I'm in the site. Um, or I'm warping into the site right now. I was looking at my skills, not related to the video. I go ahead and I consume the exile, or I will here soon, I hope. And that gives me an extra 3% rep. So he's landing at the same time as me on the site. Always best in this case just to go on in, not fight here. All right, well, he's already gone in ahead of me. That's fine. I still know it's just me and him, so that's all good. Uh, the Magus can't get in here. So I want to... Ideally, I should have primed my guns to be overloaded there. 
But once you get in like this, the, the best thing to do is to just be as quick as possible about getting to your range, getting your DPS on target. So you see we're both ooh, pretty close in getting damage on target there. That was, that was pretty close in who was first. It looked like I was winning for a second, but now it's starting to look like he might be winning. Um, I think my drone skills and my extra armor rep really, towards the end of the fight, is where the armor rep and that extra little 3% from the RS-603 and the 3% from the Exile, that's where that really starts to make the difference. And that's why you saw at the first of the fight, he looked like he was winning, but then by the end of the fight, it's pretty clear that I've got to fight one because I've been out repping him. I've been repping more DPS throughout this entire fight. And that was pretty basic. There was nothing there was nothing there that was all that special about my keypad or my orbit. That didn't really matter. In that fight it was kind of like, you know, taking two exact same ships and just putting them against each other and whoever's got the better whoever's better prepared is going to win. So, getting DPS on first as well as having those little edges like I talked about the the drugs, the implants. And good skills, which for a ship like this, it doesn't take long to get these skills to a good level. This is something you can do in a month or two, depending on where you're at right now. You may be able to do it right now with only maybe a few days of training, or none at all. So next up is my video on the Incursus. In this video, you're going to see me fighting against a 150mm rail Incursus. Now, this took me by surprise because I usually anticipated incursus to be a blaster incursus. The blasters allow them to be a little bit more brawly and they tend to have a pretty heavy repping tank because they get a bonus to their armor rep amount. So you'll even come across some super heavy tank incursuses that are dual rep. Those are, you can usually keep those at range and that's the best way to defeat them is to keep them at range so that they're doing very little DPS to you but they're wasting all of their AAR charges. So as soon as they run out of AAR, all of a sudden their tank drops drastically and you can chew through them pretty fast. So I was expecting the blaster version of the Incursus, but what I got was a 150 millimeter railgun Incursus. Now the 150s are the largest frigate size railguns. 125s are what you see much more commonly and they're what we have on our ship. Now, because he has 150s and we have 125s, he can outrange us. He also gets a bonus to his real to his hybrid turret railgun and blaster um, damage. So, because he gets that bonus to damage, the majority, the vast majority of his damage is coming from his railguns. Because his railguns are bigger than mine, they don't track as well. I get a tracking bonus. He doesn't. So all these things put together mean that I need to do whatever I can do to lessen his railgun damage and whatever I can do to make it more of a tracking fight where the tracking is a bigger issue because I win on tracking. Not only are my guns smaller, but I have a tracking bonus. So I win on tracking. Now it took me a little while to get to that, and we're going to see that now. So you can see it starts off, I went to the plex. Now there was two Novice plexes somewhat near each other. And I'm pretty sure I go into this one and he's not here yet. So I, I either he was here and he warped to the other plex, to the other Novice as I was coming in, or I just scanned the wrong Novice. So I takes me a second to figure it out, but then... I use my directional, drop down to 30, I can see that he's in that site, and I go to that site. Now if you haven't learned how to use your directional scan, I highly suggest you search my website for the directional scan guide. There's a free video on there, I think there's two or three free videos about it, um, some newer than others, that teach you how to use the directional scanner. It's probably one of the most important skills you can have in EVE Online. So I lower it to 1AU. That tells me he's definitely in this site. At 1AU, he's here, 100%. I go in. You can see I have my AAR primed to be overloaded. 
Now that's important. AER is primed to be overloaded and the afterburner is primed to be overloaded. I, I should also have my guns primed to be overloaded because like we talked about in the fitting video, they overload very, very well. Like you cannot overload them too much because they will overload for over two minutes. I think it's two minutes and 20 seconds on average which is way more than most fights are going to last. Now the afterburner being overloaded, I was because he was going to be at zero is what I figured. I figured he would be at zero and therefore I'd have to burn out to get to my optimal and I want to fight at 6500 and I figured that would avoid his blasters. I actually did an orbit uh, 75 which is, would be even better if he had blasters but you see that first notification 150 railgun and he is just hammering me. So right away there's a couple things I notice okay right away there's a couple important things to notice at the beginning of this fight because right now I'm losing this fight right now I am losing this fight it's important to know that I do better on the back end of a fight with this Tristan as as will you because you've got strong reps which are gonna make a difference later in the fight rather than early in the fight and because it takes a second for your drones to get DPS on target now you're gonna be using warriors instead of hobgoblins and I highly suggest that. I would also consider, instead of carrying the EC-300s, just carry eight Warrior Twos. That's what I think I'm going to start doing from now on. I just kind of thought of that yesterday. I thought, I've never used the EC-300s. It'd be much better to have more Warrior Twos, and then that way if he kills some of my drones, I can just throw out more. Right? So, important things to notice is he's winning so far, but I usually do better on the back end of a fight. So, it's not quite as bad as it looks, but I'm losing. Right, and if you look at my velocity here, let's pull this up. You can see my velocity right here. I'm going 575 meters a second. He is going 696 meters a second. So more than 100 meters a second better. We're both webbed and scrammed. So what that tells me, and I'm overloading my afterburner. He has more speed than me. Now what happened in this fight, and I talked to him afterwards, is he thought he was using keep at. Um, keep at 65 or 7500 to keep me at range which would have been his best tactic for his advantage that would have helped him the most <clears throat> because for him in a railgun in curses he wants to minimize transversal minimize the speed at which I'm rotating around him or he's rotating around me and to do that he wants to use keep at so I think he accidentally hit keep hit orbit at 500 and so what happens here is let me stop this and then what happens here is I see that I'm losing the fight and I see that it's going very badly and I start thinking about it and right about there I realize I need to be overloading my guns that was a mistake so that's going to increase my DPS a little bit more and then right there I realize that he's coming in closer and I say to myself it pops into my head <clears throat> hold on this guy's using 150 millimeter rail guns. If he's using 150s, then the best thing for me to be doing is not trying to stay at range, but orbiting him as tightly as possible. So I'd go ahead and I hit an orbit 500, and you'll see right here at the end, like I'm almost dead. One good shot from him kills me, okay? I come rotating around. You can see my ship starting to rotate around. I miss, fine, my drones are hitting him and then he misses completely right there so this miss right here right there that miss won the fight for me that single miss right there won the fight now had I not orbited 500 that last second that would have likely landed and had it landed there's a very good chance it would have taken out the, the very little bit of hit points I had left so you can see I won the fight and it was a really close fight and there's a couple things to take note of one had I used warriors I would have done I would have got DPS on faster and it would have been the right damage type to bypass most of his repping ability because most of the most ships who fit the small AARs right the small ancillary armor repairs most ships that do do not fill the hole they have in their explosive resist so in this case especially I could have pretty easily and I think we're gonna look at his fit here in a second I could have pretty easily 
killed him much faster with the Warriors, right? Another th important thing to note is he was faster than me. The fastest person controls range. Now, had he not made the mistake of orbiting at 500 and instead kept me at 6,500, then he would have won that fight, I'm pretty sure. Even with the Warriors, it's close, but there's a very good chance he would have won the fight because he was controlling range. So, in that case, there's, there's not much I can do. If he's faster than me, then I just have to maximize my damage output and my repping ability. You can see there, here, there's his tank. So, he's got 150 millimeter rail guns, which, the obvious, it hits me right now, even harder, it says, wow. I made a mistake that entire fight. I should have been in tight, orbiting as tight as possible. That was a mistake, right? And you can see he has nothing to fill his explosive hole, right? He's got an adaptive nanoplating, but that's just base resist across the board. He's still going to have a lack of resist for explosive because all the armor repping ships do. And other than that, you can see he's got a pretty similar fit to mine. He's a scram kite, afterburner, scram web. It's a good fit. He's got a good fit. So I hope these videos helped you out. I hope that now that you've seen the ship in action, you've learned the tactics, you understand the fitting, you can take this ship today, go out there, and find a fight. Go, don't, don't just do one. I want you to go buy five or ten of these ships fully fit and get them set up on the edge of a low sec somewhere. Maybe have them all set up in Jita and then enter through Tama. Be careful of gate camps because sometimes there's Instalox Faples. But go through Tama, go out into the faction warfare around there, and try to get fights in the Novices. The only way you're going to learn is to get out there and do it. The single most common advice I give to people who come to me for advice is I tell them to go lose more ships because so many people are afraid of losing their ship that they don't get enough experience to desensitize themselves to the rush of PvP as well as to develop those built-in instincts that you get from repeating something over and over and over. So I want you to go buy 10 of these ships right now. Buy 10 of them. It's going to cost you about 100 million isk. And I want you to go lose them all in the next week. Lose every single one of those ships in the next week one way or another. If it means doing stupid stuff, do it. One way or another, take every fight you can find and lose every single one of those ships. And the point of this isn't to get a bunch of kills. You'll probably get, a, you'll probably get some kills along the way. The point of it is to desensitize you and to make it very clear to you which ships are just absolute no-goes. Like fighting the worm, it's a bad idea. Right? Fighting a succubus, it's a bad idea. But fighting an Incursus, it's a good idea. Fighting a Tristan, fighting a Tormentor, fighting against a Kestrel, fighting against a Merlin. Those are all really good ideas, things that you can do. So good luck. Uh, let me know in the comments how you do. Link your kills and get out there and do it.